From New Center 11, this is On the Record. Hello, I'm John Johnson. Welcome to On the Record. Glad to have you with us on this day. It's the holiday season, Christmas, Thanksgiving, coming up very, very soon. And uh, when we think of that, we think always of the Wesley House here in Meridian and its executive director, Jen Just Stevens. Welcome. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, John. Uh, you are around all year long, obviously, doing great things in this community, and you have so many programs that you can talk about. But uh, we're glad to have you here in this special time because this is the time when people... Think about giving and where they should be giving their gifts, and uh, right. we're glad to have you with us. How are you? Well, How are you, you doing? I am great. Um, I have the most wonderful job in the world, uh, and I'm I'm blessed in that I get to serve within my calling mm -hmm. and my passion. So I'm 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 a happy woman. Well, and it's not just your passion, it's been your family's passion, <laughs> am I correct? Is. You're absolutely correct. Tell us correct. how your family is doing. My family is doing remarkably well. Um, my mom had, she's recovering well from that fall that she had, mm -hmm. and my dad is doing very well, and my brother and sister, so I, we really can't complain. Life happens to everybody, but uh, yeah. I'm really thankful for the help that we have, and that's really all that's important, really, is relationships and, and health. and. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a special surprise last year because she was at the Toy-Thon last year. And so we I were, believe she's coming yeah. again this year. Well, we look forward to seeing her. <laughs> and, uh, and look for, so, well, tell us a little bit about Westinghouse and what's going on this year and uh, what, what we ought to know. I mean, you've, you've had a long history in this community. Yes, well, Wesley House has a lot of programs, but uh, they are all located under separate and distinct agencies. Mm -hmm. We have six agencies. And, uh, for instance, we had the Victim Services Agency, and that, of course, encompasses the Child Advocacy Center and the Sexual Assault Crisis Center and the Education Agency, the Health Care Agency, which, just to give you a, a rough idea of the work that's being done at Wesley House and the investment that people in our community make uh, toward helping people on a long-term basis, we served 113 people within the last month two months, I'm sorry, and that saved our community $8,000 and some change. Mm. Uh, I know that um, right now we are busily, busily engaged in uh, helping folks at the holiday season, and I'm learning that more and more people are coming to us who, who have never asked before. They've never had to ask before, and a third of those, and this is rising, by the way, have degrees. Mm. Um, so what we have done under the Christian Relief Agency, you know, I've brought, I am a retired teacher, uh, and so what we're doing, I'm into measurement, and what we have now is a program, it's an eight-week course for those clients that have come through Wesley House two, three times. It's a mandatory course. We address uh, two weeks each on the following subjects, um, family relations and running a household, uh, spiritual uh, health and fitness, and of course, financial. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's taught by experts here in this community that come in that know what they're doing. And uh, at the end of that eight weeks, we sit down with them, each person, and make sure that they have a resume, that they have a budget that they can work within. Uh, we do things throughout the course of the year where we call utility companies or mortgage companies or, or whomever to make it uh, work with them so that they can help the client uh, pay, mm -hmm. you know, because nobody wants to be delinquent on purpose. I don't, I don't believe that there are people like that. I really don't. But uh, we've been really successful as far as working with people and agencies within the community to help people to be able to pay their debt mm -hmm. and to take care of what's going on. But it takes time. And, uh, but it's kind of like corporal punishment, you know, spanking your child. Mm -hmm. You know, in that uh, parenting course that we teach, it's a, man, a court-mandated um, situation, and these parents have had their children taken away because of ne neglect or abuse or whatever. And we say to them, how many of you believe in spanking your children? Well, I do. I believe in spanking my child, and the question to, that is next given to them is, well, how many times do you have to spank them? Well, I spank them at least once or twice a, a day. Well, then you can see that that's not working. We need to look at something else, some other tools. And that's how it is at Wesley House and with nonprofits, I think. If they keep coming, if clients keep coming back, 
uh, month after month, maybe they skip a month, then whatever we're doing, it's just not working, don't you think? Yeah. And as a Christian in Wesley House, who are we? We are a ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, we started with the Methodist Church. They're the, you know, that's our founders. But I want the community to know that even though we have a cross and flame on our wall, which we bear proudly, we are serving the community. Right. We are a community center. The middle name in Wesley House Community Center, Inc., is community. So we never seek programs. My goodness, we don't seek programs. But we follow the need. And my job is to assess the need continually within our community and then find creative ways of dealing with it that can really make a difference. Something more than giving a partial payment check mm -hmm. only to see them go to another agency next month and then back to Wesley House the next month. That's not happening anymore. You have got to get with those that you serve, and this is not in, in, in part of your area, but it has got to hurt your heart when you have seen stories just this week dealing with the starvation of a child, a two-year-old in Scott County. When you see something like oh. that, it's got to be incredible. It's incredible and it's real. Yeah. See, that's what we always read the paper and I think that it's just our human nature at this time. We want to think the wonderful jolly thoughts and the Norman Rockwell Christmas and what we need to realize is that that is not a reality for so many people. And there are, if you ask me what was the main commodity that was being asked for these days, it's food. It is food. People are starving. We have people who are living with family members. Some are living within a, a car or a van because they go to work during the day and mm -hmm. their children are in school during the day and then they sleep in their car because they feel they can support, you know, keep the family warm at that. Had one such case, had a child come through, I was telling you about earlier, the mom and dad sat before me and I, I take applications too. I'm a hands-on director and uh, I was very uncomfortable in my skin talking about adult situations with this little child sitting there and so to lighten it up I turned to her and I said, what is on your wish list? this Christmas. What would, you, what would you love for Santa Claus to bring you this year? And she said, Miss Stevens, I have to tell you, I don't really believe in Santa, but I would be very happy if we could just be warm and that my mama would stop crying. Mm -hmm. She worries about me. Well, at that, I, you can imagine what came next and the family fell apart pretty much in my arms. But that's just one story. There's so many that go untold. This morning before I came here, I like to be real. I'm not into fluff. The statistics that I give people on what we do at Wesley House, mm -hmm. there's so many that go unreported just simply because if I can't prove it, I'm not going to speak it. But I know that we've been taking Christmas applications since October 1. We will take applications all the way through December. We give out the week of the 15th. And uh, we are seeing hundreds and thousands of families and people that are needing help. And th this little girl that came to me was just so desperate for some toys for her, her baby brother. You know, I just need some toys for my brother. Don't ask for myself, but for my little brother. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's all kinds of loving situations going on within families here. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll show you an address and a telephone number that you can, if you want to talk with the Wesley House or give a donation. When there's, a, there's a gift that you can do. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay Thank you. Welcome back to On the Record. We're talking with Ginger Stevens. She is executive director of the Wesley House and uh, here, here in Meridian Community, community service. That means That's a lot. Right. Yeah. It does mean a lot. Uh, this morning as I opened up the door, as I frequently do, my staff, can I just say this? Yeah, sure. Our staff, we're all professionals. And all of the staff at Wesley House are trained. They are taken care of. And I take close attention to what's going on with them because they listen to the hurts. They're the ones that are making the face-to-face -face mm -hmm. contact with people. And uh, I want to make sure that our product, the love, is there as we give it out. And you get one pop at it, John. You know, people come and they ask, and if you don't treat them with respect and love, 
then they won't come back. Yeah. But uh, this morning I opened up the door as I often do and I said, hey, everybody, how's everybody doing this morning and what's going on? And if you could have a voice in this community, what would you tell folks that your hurts are and, and how might we help in that? And I got a lot of different answers. And one gentleman says, you know, I, I'm an engineer, but I lost my job. They're downsizing. And, and he says, I would be grateful for anything, Ms. Stevens. He says, anything, anything from doing lawns to blowing leaves to, you know, helping anybody I could. I would love a nine to five job. That would be great. And then uh, we went around the room and that, and uh, I said, how many of y'all are first time askers? There was one person there with a child who had been to Wesley House before. Now that's, uh, that's astounding. Wow. And uh, so anyway, this man went on to say, who are you? And I said, well, my name is Ginger. And he says, well, but, but like, who are you? <laughs> I said, I'm the, the director here. And he says, you've asked ab about our needs. Could we pray for you? And that's exactly what happened. Uh, this guy over here starts praying. As he's winding down, this lady over here starts praying for me. And you can see where this is going. Sure. And everybody there prayed for me. And so the question is, who's really ministering to whom? And uh, oftentimes I think people that are impoverished get a bad get a bad rap. Uh, we place judgments on them that should not be as Christians. And we need to be who we say that we are. You know, one of the problems that, um, one of the things I'm having to deal with this year with the, all the need that we have at Wesley House that come through the doors are my staff. And here's why. We're really being challenged. People are angry. They are frustrated. They are feeling hopelessness like you've never seen it before. And they have a face when they come to Wesley House. Like I said, all of the professionals at Wesley House know what they're doing. There are no volunteers that work one-on-one -on -one with mm -hmm. the clients mm -hmm. because of confidentiality in that. And all the data that we keep on clients is kept right there within our network right there at Wesley House for confidentiality reasons. But one such lady uh, was having a little fit the other day. And uh, the guy that was working with her, our, one of my employees, says to me, Miss Stevens, I just don't know what, here's her application, but I just, blah, 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 blah. Pretty human, pretty human. Right. So I, I walked out, I called her into my office, and uh, I said, I am so sorry you're having a hard time. And what can I do for you? Well, that gentleman, blah, 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 and treated me with disrespect. I said, I'm sorry. And I said, I'd like to know what we can do to help you and what's going on in your life. And as I sat there with her, I did pray with her. I called the gentleman in, and he apologized to her for anything that he might have done. But we realize, we're realizing that you cannot meet aggression with aggression. I mean, I'm old enough to know that. Mm -hmm. You are, too. Mm -hmm. But... People are hurting, and they are lashing out. You're seeing it in the crime, in the rising crime. You're, I had a friend that was, uh, people stole out of her car last night as she ran inside to get something out of her kitchen. It's, it's happening because of desperation. It's not an excuse. It's a reason, though, and that's what's going on. Does it seem like, then, that, the, that you're fighting a losing battle on this? Because you, you do such great work, but you, it's always something. Is that, does it feel like you are? Or do you feel, as you get prayed I'm for... I'm so glad you asked this. It's a great question. Somebody once asked me that, and it was a lot more crude fashion. But why should you give to Wesley House... Isn't it just a hopeless situation anyway? No. Because half of the people that are coming through, like I said, are first-time askers. And the ones that are coming through that have been there more than once, mm -hmm. they are receiving help this way. They are receiving help as far as life skills. They are leaving with a plan, a plan A and a plan B. They are leaving with a resume. They are leaving with um, a budget that they can live within. I'm not ta we're talking to people right. seriously about emergency mode. You got two phones, well you need to choose which one you want. You know, you got a uh, cable service, I'm sorry, but you might, for right now, get rid of it. You know, use an antenna, do what you can do. But we all have to take care of the emergency needs first. 
And then the other thing is, uh, I'm feeling nothing but hopeful mm -hmm. for the future because I feel like desperate times equal desperate measures, but it also means community. It means get it out there. That's why I called. I'm desperate. Right. I'm desperate. I feel a burden for this community. Wesley House is not a national agency. National agencies are wonderful, that, but they get trickle-down money from the top. We do not. Um, but here's the blessing in not being that. Our boundaries are not so rigid. Mm. I talked to you about the eight-week course that we do for those that have been there two and three times. But we, for those, like I said, we work on a one-to-one -one basis. And as we do this, we know that we can move our boundaries to help somebody. Sometimes it takes more than one or two times just to get people into a place. Look at the burnout that we dealt with mm -hmm. yesterday. You know, it takes more than one or two times. It takes heart, it takes time, and it takes a lot of prayer and support from the community. And the other choice is to do nothing, and you don't want that. Oh, that's like being dead. Yeah, we've got the number, you've, you've seen that on your screen, 601-485-4736. There's an address there, 2 P.O. Box 1207, Meridian 39302. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking to Ginger Stevens. She is executive director of the Wesley House. Um, and we're talking about giving. Uh, when you give to the Wesley House, and there's a num you'll see a number pop up on, on your screen. It's at 485-4736. It's a telephone right. number, and we'll, you'll see that it is, it is there. When you give to the Wesley House, where is it going and what do you give for? I love that question, too. Every penny goes directly to the clients. It's a wonderful place to invest. You know, we, you mentioned the black hole that you give into, you know, mm -hmm. and isn't there always need? Yes, there always is need. And there will always be need. But nowhere in the Bible does it say that the same people have to be impoverished all of their lives. It, show me where it says that. Mm -hmm. It just simply does not. So what we're trying to do and what we are being successful at doing as we see our numbers go down, for the Christian Relief and as we see people get out and actually become productive in the community is this. We are seeing that our agency is making a tremendous difference through your giving. Through your giving. Give of your prayers. If you don't know which agency, I don't care where you give. I don't worry about it. We belong to God mm -hmm. and that's where we place our faith. But in behalf of the people that we are serving, Please remember them. Give what you can give. If it's a dollar, do it. We depend upon you. We are your community center. We are not a national agency, and we want to belong to you. And as the people told me this morning, Ms. Stevens, just tell them to do what they can do. Just ask them if they would pray for us and do what they can do. Because like that little girl that came to me and, and wanted to be warm this Christmas, that is something that should not happen with a child. And if there's a doubt as far as Wesley House and serving children at Christmas time this year, children can't control what their parents do or don't do. Please help us. I, I'm not having the support this year as far as toys and, and uh, benefits and that kind of thing, not even with the Toys for Tots. I, I don't, I'm sure they're busy, but I think they're working with another agency this year. Please help us. We need you to pick up the slack. We need money. I'm just going to speak it. I hate to ask for money, mm -hmm. but we need it, John. And, it, and this is tough times. And you it know is that tough. Everybody's and, going through and that. And as people, how do I pay? I can't pay for that little girl's heating right. with toys. Right. I need help. And that's why I'm here. Because I know that if this community, as loving as it is, if they know that there's a need, they always come forward mm -hmm. because we're a community of believers. Those first-time clients that you have, many of them have children also, am I correct? Absolutely, and I'm glad you mentioned that because as people come through and, you know, say somebody shows up, you know, at Wesley House and, and uh, they're all adults that are making application, don't you know, they affect the children. The children watch them. They watch and see, does my parent work? Okay, my parent is working. She could make more if she did not work. Don't you see? There are people that are asking now that have fallen through the cracks. They're trying to do the right thing. But because they work, they make too much for 
food stamps or housing or any kind of assistance like that. And Wesley House is stepping into the gap. We have created programs for people specifically designed for people who are working specifically designed for them. There's a lot of programs for people that don't want to do better. But God did not create throwaway people. Uh, it's like that little girl told me um, last Christmas. I will never forget this. She said, Miss Stevens, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for giving me hope. Because what had happened is I had given a pretest for the after school program. The question was, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I got all kinds of fun answers. And this child, 11-year-old child, says, I want to work at Popeye's Chicken. Mm -hmm. I feel like the chicken is really good. I've got a great personality. I feel like I can give to my community. Well, last March, I had an annual meeting. I thought I'd do a post-test. And the same child says, I want to be a congresswoman. I feel like I can make a big difference. So can you do better than that? Dreams grow. Dreams grow. We'll be back. This is the telephone number you see on your screen, 601-485-4736 or Post Office Box 1207. That is the Wesley House, uh, 39302. And Ginger Stevens' final segment with her as Executive Director of the Wesley House. Yes. I think I would like to just let everybody know that we are thankful for what you've done for us in the past over these 100 years. And we are looking forward with anticipation to the holiday season. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we're praying for an outpouring from you. Open your hearts, give, and you will receive. And uh, it's, it's hard to ask. I know I'm having a hard time asking today. But you have to ask. And uh, you don't know if I don't tell you. Mm -hmm. So please help us. We need your prayer, and we need your covering, and we need money, and we need food and we need toys. Mm -hmm. So please help us. Help us this Christmas. All right. Well, we thank you for coming by and talking with us, and uh, good season to you, and uh, <laughs> Merry you, Christmas. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you very much for being here. We'll see you again next Sunday. We hope you have a good week.